machine learning and artificial intelligence are making the headlines quite literally at first their impact was a bit slow people would design algorithms to play video games better than humans which was cool but not earth shatteringly important but gradually these techniques started getting better even better than humans in some cases they could solve more non trivial tasks like comprehension things that were supposed to be the hallmark of intelligent life forms once these developments started happening the field was very quick to find more impactful applications of these techniques things that changed the lives of actual people today ml and ai are changing the way we do science they're saving lives and at the same time creating new business opportunities that generate billions of dollars in revenue of course people have not stopped having fun and continue to use ai and ml to answer burning questions like who will win the next reality television show but joke applications aside i think you will agree that these techniques cannot be ignored and people who are calling ai and ml as next electricity may be on to something at this point there may be several questions buzzing in your mind especially if you have never studied ai and ml beyond the newspaper headlines like what is machine learning why is it called machine learning how is it able to do all this cool stuff is machine learning the same as artificial intelligence and most importantly can i get in on the action can i become an ml expert too well if these are the questions on your mind then it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to melbo who will be our friend and guide in this journey to discovering the inner workings of machine learning my beautiful friends this is cs771 introduction to machine learning and let's get started you will find several definitions and explanations of what is machine learning but the one i seem to like the best the one i will try to justify as we go along is that machine learning is really the art and science of solving ill understood tasks now i want you to take a moment to let this sink in while newspaper articles and research papers would have you believe that machine learning is an exact cut and dried science there's actually a very beautiful and artistic aspect to ml as well of course this makes it that much harder for someone to master machine learning simply by watching a few videos or completing a course but trust me this also makes the journey that much more pleasing and rewarding now coming to the ill understood bit when i say ill understood i mean a task uh, at which humans will struggle to specify a clear step by step procedure to solve that task say by writing a piece of code to appreciate this better um, let us take the task of figuring out the state in which a car was registered by looking at its license number this is actually a very simple problem to solve there exist all these tables which tell you how to look at the first two letters of the license number and get the state of registration from that it's that simple we can write a two three line piece of code in python let's say to solve this problem now contrast this with the related but much more difficult problem of finding out the license plate number or the state of registration from actual images of the license plates uh, and the real reason why the second problem is so difficult and i i would argue ill understood is the dizzying variety in which these letters are typeset in indian number plates it is very difficult to write down a clear set of rules that would capture every possible way in which let's say the letter r or the letter j can be written on these number plates now in case you were wondering why is this such a big deal since you and i are obviously able to identify the letters just fine just pause and think if you can indeed write down a few lines of code to replicate how you as a human are able to identify all the different variations of the letter j or the letter d in these examples 
you might immediately struggle to explain your own human recognition process. Moreover, it is just not true that humans are good at all recognition tasks. They are just good at tasks with which they are familiar. If I give you five examples of the same word written in a script unknown to you, assuming you are not a Bangla speaker, I have a feeling that even your human recognition powers will fail at identifying all the different ligatures as being the same. We can take another example to understand the difference between a well-understood task for which it's easy to write code and an ill-understood task for which machine learning might be required. Let's take the example of sorting. Given n numbers, sort them in decreasing order of value. This is a very simple problem to solve and there exist tons of algorithms like bubble sort, quick sort and the like to solve these problems. Now look at the related problem of recommendation. We are given n items. Let's say they are on sale on a website like Amazon or Flipkart. And for each user of this website, we wish to rank or sort these items in decreasing order of how much the user would like them. So for this gentleman, for instance, uh, the person might like oranges better than limes and then watermelons and then strawberries. But for this lady here, strawberries might be more preferable to watermelons than to grapes than to apples. And for this gentleman, grapes are the most preferred fruit. In this case, yet again, it is unclear what is it about that user that led them to prefer, say, oranges over watermelons. Is it their age? Is it their gender? Is it their previous purchase history? Which is why this I'm calling an ill-understood task that's worthwhile of use in ML applications. Now at this point, I would like you to take a break and really think about what are the tasks that you do in your everyday life that could be solved using machine learning. So I would like you to come up with at least one pair of activities that you do regularly. Let's call those two activities A1 and A2, such that for activity A1, you would be able to specify a very clear step-by-step -step procedure to solve that activity, let's say using a piece of code. An example could be calling someone on a mobile phone. But for the second activity, A2, it would be very difficult for even you to articulate a clear procedure. For example, choosing between tea and coffee at breakfast. So by now you must be wondering why this wondrous ability to handle these ill-understood tasks is called machine learning. To understand this, let us first see how computers are usually used to solve simple tasks like sorting. Let's say we have an input of numbers that we would like to solve. What we usually do is write a piece of code. Let's say an algorithm like bubble sort or quick sort or heap sort. To solve this problem, we feed the input into this code and voila, we get the output, which in this case is the list of numbers sorted properly. Now for various reasons, computing devices uh, have traditionally been called machines. Uh, one reason might be that at one point of time, like a hundred years ago or so, these actually used to be giant room-sized machines and not the slim pocket-sized devices that we endlessly stare at these days. Now for ill-understood tasks, let's say the recommendation problem, as we have argued, it is difficult for a human coder to sit down and write a few lines of code to solve the task itself. So instead, for such problems, ML experts first collect several examples of the behavior we are trying to replicate. For example, in this ex uh, case, we would collect data for several users and the fruits they like. Then the ML experts would write code to take all this data and produce another piece of code that could actually do this replication faithfully. This new piece of code, which we will call a model, would now be able to take a previously unseen user and predict, hopefully correctly, the fruits that they would like. The part of this process that takes the data and produces the model is called training. 
And so the data that gets used up in this process is often called training data. And the part of this process where the model makes predictions for a previously unseen user is often called testing. Now, whether this process actually constitutes learning or whether this is better described as memorization or imitation is a philosophical debate for another day. We have more pressing concerns right now because I still haven't told you how does a machine learning algorithm actually produce the model. So the details of this will form the rest of this course, but for now, here's a teaser. Our nature, our entire universe is governed by laws. Humans are sometimes able to discover these laws after a lot of effort and usually after a long time. Some of these laws turn out to be really simple and concise, like this famous equation by Einstein. However, other laws are not so simple. For example, here are the equations that govern the standard model of particle physics. Machine learning actually operates in a very similar way. Even machine learning algorithms, they take the training data and try to discover laws and patterns that would be able to explain the data well. For example, in the license plate recognition task, the machine learning algorithm might learn that a vertical bar and a circle-like object attached to that vertical bar looks like a P and two vertical bars arranged perpendicular to each other look like an L. Uh, for the recommendation example, the machine learning algorithm might realize that a law that relates, let's say, the gender, the age, and the income level of the person is able to very nicely predict what fruits they would like. Now, I would like to uh, put in a word of caution, these are not exactly the laws or the patterns that machine learning algorithms would learn. In fact, the patterns and laws learned by these ML algorithms are usually too complex to be interpreted very easily. However, what is undeniably true is that machine learning algorithms are able to discover these complex laws far quicker than humans would. For instance, in the protein folding example that we saw earlier, it usually takes human researchers months or even years of work to figure out how a certain protein would fold. Whereas recent machine learning algorithms such as the AlphaFold can predict the same in a matter of minutes or even hours. So they are able to discover much more quickly what are the laws that govern the protein folding. Now at this point, you might be wondering, especially if you have been following popular articles, what is the difference between machine learning and artificial intelligence? Uh, this curiosity is natural since tasks such as visual recognition are indeed considered as artificial intelligence. Now, opinions on this will differ, but if you ask me, I think artificial intelligence are really the tasks that we want to solve and machine learning gives us tools to solve those tasks. So it's not a competition between machine learning and artificial intelligence, but more a form of cooperation. Where machine learning techniques are able to solve tasks that we consider as key to artificial intelligence. We can discuss this more later, but for now, I would like to leave it here itself. So today we learned that machine learning is most suitable to solve tasks where we as humans are unable to specify a clear step-by-step -step procedure to solve the task, let's say by writing a piece of code, or there's too much diversity or variety in the task, let's say in the license plate example, or there's a need to automate the task given its volume, let's say in the recommendation example. We also saw that machine learning works by analyzing training data to identify various laws or patterns that seem to explain the data well. However, the laws learned by machine learning might be too complex to be interpreted by humans very easily. But most importantly, we saw that machine learning has seen several innovative and impactful applications in the recent years but there are many, many more waiting to be discovered. You could be the one to come up with the next 
big impactful application of machine learning so that's it for today folks stay awesome and i will see you in the next one